you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next speaker is a freelance film instructor and a freelance filmmaker. She is also an alumna of the Philippine Sunrise International School, now Badr International School, in the year 2010. Having completed filmmaking in the conservatory program, as well as filmmaking workshop at the New York Film Academy, we're very proud to say that she is also a well-rounded film artist. She has taken on several filmmaking activities, such as that of being an actress, a gaffer, a production designer, a boom operator, a script supervisor, a grip, an assistant camera woman, director of photography, a sound mixer, a casting staff, production designer, and finally a director. Among her works are The Hidden Kingdom, The Lifestyles of the Filipino Expats in Jeddah, among other short films as well as documentaries. She is not just uh, fluent in Tagalog, English, and Arabic, but she as a linguist is also fluent in Korean and Japanese. She indeed wears many hats, adept with the latest camera technology, as well as the computer tools we have. She's adept as well, not only as a musician, she is able to play the following instruments. Classical piano, guitar, and the drums. And not only that, she is an athlete, being a master or an expert in martial arts. She's taken in Kung Fu, Taekwondo, Karate, and Aikido. And among her laurels include the following. She was the first cover model of the Friends of Jeddah music magazine in 2000, 2013, that's May. She was awarded Best Film Festival Director for the Best Student Film in her work, Will You Marry Me? in 2013. So it's given by the International Film Festival in Manhattan. As indeed she wears many hats. Among her projects is the Many Hats of Jamila and recognized by the Philippine Academy of Film in Manila, Philippines. And last but not the least, she was given a presidential award for cinema in her work in Ani ng Damal by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. This was in 2014. So with a big round of applause, join me in welcoming our inspirational speaker, Ms. Jamila Rose Valera del Prado Ineses, filmmaker. That was a very, very long introduction, and I highly appreciate it. Thank you very much. First and foremost, I would like to thank our dear and caring principal, <laughs> Mrs. Ophelia Laguardia, for inviting me this afternoon, and to the board of directors, members of the faculty, guests, parents, and everyone in this auditorium. A pleasant afternoon to all of you. 
I was under the guidance of Mrs. Laguardia since I was in grade one at JR International School, Achievers International School, and onwards. She was our school principal, I believe that was during the early 2000s. I have been with her for 14 years now, right, Mrs. Laguardia? I'm assuming that most of you already knows who I am, but for those of you who don't know me, I am Jamila Rose Valera del Prado Inesis, an alumni of Sunrise International School, Philippine Sunrise International School, Dornada International School, and currently known as Bader International School. I am also a filmmaking conservatory graduate of the New York Film Academy. And uh, before we get to that, uh, during my school years here, I am known to be the Supreme Student Council person for the graduating class batch 2009 and 2010. Feature editor for the school newspaper, a pioneer alto member of the Serenata Children's Choir, a musically inclined person in piano, guitar, and drums, and other extracurricular activities that I was involved in. <sighs> I was not a popular person in school before. Some people at school did not favor me. But it's not like you can please everyone. But anyhow, I, I proved all of them wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> It is true that time really flies fast. I still remember my high school graduation four years ago. And um, at that time, I was one of those sitting, one of those sitting in front of me, and now I'm the one talking here. So I am delighted to say congratulations to all graduates. I'm hoping that each and one of you not only did your best during your final year, but also during your previous school years. I'm hoping that you did not take it for granted. I'm wishing that each and every one of you that goes for the high school graduates is 100% happy and satisfied with their chosen field of study that involves their future career paths. I trust that your parents are not the ones who chose it for you because they're not the ones shaping your lives. It's not them, but you. This is just the beginning, and I'm hoping that you will stick to it until the end, because believe me, I'm saying this on behalf of all the parents. Sending a son, sons, or daughter, daughters, children to university or college is no joke. And I'm going to say this in advance, don't you dare to fail even just one subject. I'm not trying to be the bad guy here, but please, instead of trying not to fail, just do it. Even if it hurts you, well, not really hurts you, but you have to endure it because your parents are the ones responsible for sending you to university. So I hope that you do about that. And if by any chance you're not sure whether the field of study is the, is the one that you've chosen, is not the one for you, still not too late. You have to speak up before it's too late. And as early as possible, you must take a step back and think before it's too late. And I've heard a lot of stories and a lot of excuses on top of that. Some of you might be thinking right now, what on earth is she saying? Why is she saying these things on a joyous occasion like this? Mm -hmm. I will tell you my story. Since first grade until I graduated from high school, I have always, always remained on top of my class. It does not end there. Because when I went to the United States to study filmmaking for university, I graduated with the highest honors. Receiving not only a singular A on my transcript, but plural A's on my transcript. Be it academics or extracurricular activities, I have always shown my full potential and given the best performance to the utmost of my capabilities. And that is something that I can and I must be proud of. 
because of my consistency, I was very fortunate, very fortunate, because someone noticed my hard work and what that was her, Her Highness, my sponsor. It has been 10 years or almost since the first time I met her. I would always come to her palace together with my mom because she's one of her clients as well as her sisters. My older brother would come often with us as well as, and as days go by, we became close and we became friends. And ultimately, she found out that I am a smart girl, basing on my report cards, grades, transcripts. So she's seen all of that, and because of this, she promised me to send me to any university and to any course that I like when I grow up. Many would say I was lucky, but I have to disagree because I deserved it because I earned it, and I earned it because I worked hard for it. And I'm hoping that will be the same for each and every one of you. I am a very idealistic, perfectionist, meticulous, and ambitious person. I've always had a lot of dreams in life, big ones. I believe that nothing is impossible as long as you have confidence in yourself. The confidence in yourself that you can make it and achieve all the things that you want to do in life. Many of us keep some dreaming and dreaming and but how many of those dreams actually transpired? Dreaming has no fee, but it's up to the person to make it come true. Dream the impossible and visualize yourselves years from now. The brain is a powerful tool as well as the will of the person involved. If you want something to happen in your life, then strive for it, because no one is going to do it for you. You must be firm with your resolution. I have always loved watching movies and TV series since I was very young. As I grew older, I began to critique various films that I would have just watched and enjoyed. And that is to study the art of filmmaking. And gradually, my interest in watching films evolved into something more in depth. Since I was in fifth grade of elementary school, I have decided and dreamed of becoming a successful film director. Until the day I graduated from high school, my ambition did not change. NYFA has been my dream school since I was in second year in high school. It was midnight and I was searching for film schools and the internet and the first one that came up was NYFA. I checked the website and the curriculum and it seems that this school would be the perfect one for me in modeling my films. My dream to become a successful filmmaker. <clears throat> The instructors not only taught us the technical side of filmmaking, but they also taught us the etiquette in working in the industry. We are taught everything that we should know from pre-production to post-production. And it is my dream to win an Oscar for Best Director and for my film to win as well. I also want to be a part of the Guinness Bar or Book of Records as the youngest director of my generation. Now, um, I would like to share a couple of instances and my first impressions in New York and I'm, I'm thinking because you guys are going to be colleagues in your university to so just give you a brief preview of what I had when I was starting out. So, a um, few days before my flight to New York, I was never, never excited to go there. I was at my classmate's house together with another classmate. I was telling them how I was not excited going there and then they reacted in surprise to my statement said, why aren't you excited? You're going to America, your dreams is coming true. But none of those reflect on my head and it wouldn't register. So I told them maybe now I'm not that looking forward but probably when I reach there then I might feel different. So well, I must say that New York is like a jungle where everything is mixed together in one city. I was very cultural shock at first, of course, and coming from Jeddah, the whole experience was entirely different, but refreshing at the same time. And um, the people seems like they're always in a hurry, but mind you, most of the people I met in the subways and the streets are friendly. It's just that New Yorkers are always on the go and they value their time all the time. So 
There are a lot of things that I'm culture shocked about, for example, not wearing the abaya, but this may sound silly, and by the way, I'm not wearing an abaya. Mm -hmm. This is a, tra a traditional Saudi dress, they call it jalabiya, so... Yep, and um, this may sound silly, but people can't blame me because I was born here. I was born in Jeddah Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, and I'm very used to wearing it before going up. So, in regards to my studies there, at first, I thought that my classmates are going to be much older than me. I was only 18 at that time when I was admitted to the workshop. I arrived to New York on June 2, 2011, and from the airport, we went straight to my aunt's apartment, dropped our stuff, eight and then went straight to Manhattan to report to school. I was very tired from the trip because a direct flight non-stop from Jeddah to New York is almost 13 hours, I think. And um, it was the longest trip that I've ever had in my life because ever since I was in Jeddah, my family and I never took a yearly basis trips. We only go out if it's on an emergency basis. So anyhow, I was able to report and sign in some documents and they gave me a schedule and told me the meeting about the day before class starts, which took place in the school's auditorium. And as I was watching all the students introduce themselves, I spotted some of the individuals that belonged to my section. And my impression was correct. The people who are going to be my classmates are definitely much older than me. But that was not the case when I pursued the conservatory program because all the classmates are almost the same age as me. And at the beginning, I was very worried if I would fit in class because I barely talked to anyone. I can barely remember. I can still remember when I was doing the filmmaking workshop, my mom would always come with me to school. She would sit and wait at the lobby until I finished my classes. Imagine that. So in between classes, we have 10 to 15 minute breaks. I would go with her to eat snacks or lunch. I still remember when I was in the editing lab, there, was a, there were editing TAs and then teaching assistants to help and guide us if we have any questions or if our computer malfunctioned, they would fix it. I was the type who doesn't ask any questions. In the first place, I didn't have any because I was very attentive in all of my classes and editing is one of my favorites. I love being in the editing lab the most because it, it was very relaxing and it boosts my motivation because I can see that there are other students who are putting their best efforts while editing their works. It gives me inspiration as well. <clears throat> now, two of my unforgettable experiences during my study in the New York Film Academy were being able to meet and network with one, Michael Socio. Michael Socio, I think you might have heard of his name before, um, Michael Snow Socio is also a NIFA alumni and he is the personal script doctor of Will Smith. I'm sure you know who is Will Smith. Yeah. And, um, and director Brett Ratner. Director Brett Ratner is the director of the Rush Hour movie starring Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, and The Tower Highs. I'm sure you might have heard of it. Ben Stiller and Eddie Murphy. Um, X-Men, The Last Stand, Prison Break, Pilot Episode. He's also one of the executive producers and many more. When I started doing the conservatory program on the month of September 2011, there were eight sections. In my sections, there were only four girls, including myself, and majority of them are males. So, the challenging part about being a female in the class is if I'm assigned to a job where physical strength is primarily needed, then that's where we kind of make the downfall on it. But um, most of my guys, classmates, are there to assist us if we need any help with all things stuff. And um, we write, direct, edit, produce, and shoot our own films. Every day was an adventure because we were always busy shooting. We traveled borough to borough, city to city, and state to state, depending on where is the location of the shoot. So at the beginning, I must admit that I had a difficult time with some of my classmates because of their different personalities and language barrier. Believe it or not, I do have classmates who couldn't speak English, fluent English, yes. And especially my classmates from China and Korea, they were so surprised when they heard me speak in English. I told them that English was the medium of instruction in my alma mater, Bader International School, and it is my second language. And I still remember Mom LaGuardia always telling us to always speak in English, but I guess that hard work paid off because I'm one of the products right here. Yeah. So, 
I am very confident with my language skills and I owe it to my excellent teachers who taught me back in my alma mater in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay. There are people who I get along with in class and there are those that I don't and I'm sure that that goes for everything else. The one thing that you must possess in any situation, and especially when you're a film student or any kind of art student, is patience. Because a lot of people would be criticizing your work, be it constructive or not. And for every film that we shot, we would be screening it with the rest of the class. The first time is just basically screening it, and the second time is where the critique comes from. Some of the people in class will appreciate it and some will don't. Some will say mean things too. Because of this, there are instances where you must defend yourselves. We are all equal people. We are all equal people as filmmakers as well. I've experienced working with irresponsible crewmates and as well as those who are dependable ones. It is not always that we get to choose, that we get to choose the people who we want to work with. But in the film industry, one must be flexible because you shall be experiencing working with other people that have different personalities. The most exposing part of the year is during our thesis period. We had to prepare our scripts three months prior to our shooting dates, or even one more month, or even more, and another, and another month from, from two, or for casting, audition, set prop, locations, renting cameras, plus its accessories. Some of my classmates did this and they spent a lot of time just to create the film that they had in their vision. I, on the other hand, flew to Jeddah to shoot my documentary thesis film, which is The Hidden Kingdom, which was mentioned earlier. Um, it was such a stressful and rewarding experience and creating a film takes a lot of effort and perseverance on our part as filmmakers because filmmakers are known as storytellers and in becoming one, it transpires when you actually start making films. And it doesn't matter if it's a blockbuster Hollywood type of movie, an indie film, a short film. It's when, once you start making films, you're already a filmmaker. And that's all there is. So I just wanted to point this out because it seems that people outside of this profession seems to misunderstood the motion, the industry of the motion picture of arts. As filmmakers, we must bring joy and satisfaction to our audience, and as the saying goes, thou shalt not bore, taken from my school, from Soho Compass. My overall experience was incredible, and I am very happy that I got to experience it as I climbed to success and pursuit of my dream. Now, back to reality. I am actually a cry baby when it comes to living in Jeddah, and I'm sure Many of you are going to experience this. I'm actually a cry baby when it comes to living in Jeddah because during my semester breaks or spring break, I would come back for a short while and leave and I would cry, always cry the day before my flight to go back to New York. So I didn't want to be away from mom. So I didn't want to be away from mom and once and once I cried on an Air France Delta flight from Paris to New York and I was crying the entire time and I, maybe, maybe my seatmate thought I was crazy because I still kept the tissues with me until I reached New York and until I reached my aunt's apartment. So, and when I reached my aunt's apartment, guess what happened? I cried again and shouted what name? Mama. Every day during breaks at school, I would always call my mom regardless of what time it is. And even if it, if, even if it was already past midnight, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., I would still call her and disturb her sleep. <laughs> okay. I would always buy phone cards to call her, so I always call overseas. And I know it's expensive, but what can I do? It's like, I miss my mom, so what can you do about it? So. I would always make sure that I have phone cards with me before I go anywhere. So, and I'm sure that many of you, or maybe some of you, are going to be experiencing this, or a similar experience with me. So, just to give you a heads up on that. So, 
Last year, on July 2013, I submitted my film to the International Film Festival in Manhattan. And a few weeks later, I received a confirmation saying that my film is one of the chosen films that will be screened from October 17 to 19. I was so overwhelmed and I was so happy. I was so speechless, I didn't know what to say. So it was the first time I ever submitted into a film festival. And I couldn't believe that my film was actually chosen among hundreds of entries from all over the world. And, uh, okay, so according to the directors of the film festival, IFFM, it is the first time that someone from Saudi Arabia and a Filipino submitted into their film festival. So it was such a huge honor for me being the first one and uh, it does not stop there because weeks later I received an email, another email from one of the film festival organizers saying that I was nominated for a major award wow. and finally during the awards night on October 19 in the city they announced that I won Film Festival Director Award for Best Student Film. Because of my accomplishment at the International Film Festival Manhattan, I was given another recognition. I'm very, very honored. That recognition is coming from the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. It is an organization under the Office of the Republic of the Philippines. Last month, on February 2, I went to the Philippines and it was held at Resorts World Manila, I was given a presidential award for cinema during the sixth Aninantangan, or sixth harvest of honors. I stood alongside with Miss Nora Anor, who I was sitting next to on the left, Mr. Eddie Garcia, Mr. Joel Torre, Director Berliante Mendoza, Director Junhana, Director Roy Iglesias, Ms. Alessandra De Rossi, Ms. Eugene Domingo, Ms. Sandy Talat, who I was sitting next to, and many more. So for those of you who don't know, the Aninandangal, which is the Harvest of Honors in English, is a state recognition given to a natural-born Filipino artist or group that has reaped top honors in international events. Its coverage includes the seven art disciplines, which includes architecture and allied arts, cinema, dance, dramatic arts, literary arts, music, visual arts, including multidisciplinary arts. It is an annual event in the Philippines celebrated as a highlight and concluding rite of the Philippine Arts Festival. And the Philippine Arts Festival is being held every February of each year. And my final remarks to you graduates are, one, surpass your parents' accomplishments. Challenge yourselves to do better and give them the lives that they deserve. Always be thankful to God and two, second, your parents. Cherish them above anyone else. Two, do your best in everything that you do. There is no room for excuses and as well as regrets. You can never turn back time, so make sure that you use it wisely. Three, finally, my sincerest congratulations to all graduates. And if by any chance some of you are aspiring actors or actresses or filmmakers, you know where to reach me and it's still not too late. To everyone who is present this afternoon, thank you very much for coming. And I'm wishing you all a pleasant day. Thank you. indeed an awe-inspiring message. It shows only the fruits of hard work of teachers and students. So we are very delighted with your achievements. Moving on, to highlight the ceremony, 